News. <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need news. Hold on. I'm being told that we do in fact need news. So here's some news. The Pope is a progressive SJW libtard snowflake. Did you hear? Total cuck job, that Pope Francis. The papal conclave just billowing rainbow smoke as all regalia and insignia have now been changed to Antifa logos and resistance hashtags. Shocking stuff, really. And this is all according to um, lists on the internet that are often praising our progressive Pope, as well as hilarious people on the Twitter who are the opposite of praising. And then, like, he slapped that woman's hand, and we were all like, Yas, Pope! And, you know, we'll definitely get to the validity of Pope Francis's wokeness. But first, allow me to explain why the hell this is even a thing, and why you should care, with a new segment we're calling... Mmm, sexy Pope news. Maybe, uh, loosen that collar, because it's gonna get pretty hot in here. So the Pope! Before this current pope, Pope Benedict, was a super popey pope. A conservative, even in his youth. Benedict was seen as an aloof Vatican insider and pretty much business as usual for an organization that's business was making huge headlines for a massive child sex abuse scandal. Remember when the Hulk and Vulture teamed up with Dr. Strange's girlfriend because they worked for Sabretooth? That's what we're talking about here. Also, the guy who made Captain America all big and strong was there too. So basically, we had this church that people were very much not into, wafting secrecy and bureaucracy, and being led by a guy who spent his life doing Vatican stuff, and who held very outdated and traditional views, which I guess is kind of what religion is all about, but then the dude's Pope Butler went ahead and leaked a bunch of his correspondence to the media, and as, re as a result, exposed even more evidence of deep corruption and infighting. Then, that pope, who had only just got all poped out, resigned. Which for all you non-pope fanatics, or pope pories as they like to be called, a pope resigning wasn't a thing that had happened for like 600 years. And many people suspect that it had a lot to do with all the stuff I just told you about. Uh, cue the cool pope, Pope Francis. He's not like other popes. He was a bouncer. The first South American Pope. MTV made him a special Pope playlist. And his drapes were like, all kinds of fleek. Fleeking so hard, and all over the place. Fleeking on the walls, and floor, and the chairs, and just, just real, real disgusting fleeking. Time Magazine made him the 2013 Person of the Year, calling him the People's Pope. For a brief moment in the tens, new Pope was a damn smoke show. Like stupid popular. So much that he even boosted tourism to the Vatican. Then in mid-2018 something happened. Specifically this happened. It turns out that while our new cool Pope was like down with the youth and junk, very little had been done behind the scenes to curb the decades-long issue with other religious authorities who were also really down with the youth. But not in the cool way, but like the bad, the very, very bad way. Really bad. It's like we briefly forgot that just because the Vatican elected a friendly face, that wasn't nearly enough to fix some extremely deep-rooted problems within the church. And so once again, the Pope's approval went plummeting back down to reality. And to cool Pope's credit, he seemed to have gotten the message. Cut to now. And despite a still dwindling popularity, not just for the Pope, but the Catholic Church as a whole, P. Fran is continuing to make waves within the Vatican for actually trying to restructure the Church. He appointed two handfuls of new cardinals, many of which from more diverse areas than previous cardinals, and have far more progressive views on things like LGBTQ issues, as well as people who actually understand and have empathy toward immigration. In fact, he's created a whole new office devoted to helping refugees and really push toward the need for compassion toward migrants. He's also helping to push for the first black American saint, which is pretty swell. He also named the first African American as Archbishop of Washington, which is considered the highest post in the US. That Archbishop 
Wilton Gregory has spoken out specifically against Trump and also publicly encouraged the acceptance of transgender Catholics. And that's not nearly the first pro-LGBTQ priest the Pope has signal boosted. Cool Pope isn't cool with people who are uncool to LGBTQ folks, and that's cool of him. Cool Pope has also given more lenient views on abortion. He's spoken out against violence aimed at women and just made history for putting a woman in a top-level position. And probably the most important, he's actually talking about climate change as a threat. These are all pretty good things to do. And yes, I know that some of you are probably screaming at your screen, hearing me totally suck off the Pope, which I'm far too old for, and about what should be considered subpar levels of acceptance and decency. And well, totes get to that. But in terms of the Catholic Church, it's a pretty big deal. Especially since he's not just piling on new changes, but going back and trying to amend old problems at their actual root. At the end of 2019, he announced the resignation of Cardinal Angelo Sodano, the then Dean of Cardinals, which is like, I don't know, if, if the Pope was the shredder of Cardinals, then the Dean is like the bebop and or rock steady of Cardinals. Anyway, the Pope announced Sodano's resignation, which may or may not have something to do with the fact that it was discovered that the Dean had blocked several investigations into a priest accused of sexually abusing scores of victims. So yeah, good idea to get rid of that guy. But an even better idea is what the Pope did next, which was to actually look at the position of the bebop of Cardinals. Or, the, po the Pope is, Krang and the Dean is Shredder, or like, the, the, is God Krang? And then heaven is Dimension X, and Jesus and the angels are like the neutrinos? I don't know. I'm not a theology scholar. Anyway, the Pope looked at the Dean of Cardinals and actually made changes to the position itself, even adding a term limit to what traditionally was a lifetime appointment. Hmm, maybe, maybe we should tighten term limits for the other things too. I don't, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a good idea we should talk about for something else unrelated to this. But he's not stopping there. Cool Pope is continuing to weed out members of the church who covered up abuse cases and seemingly trying to shed light on the issue and even exploring the idea that certain priests don't need to be celibate. And while that last thing is only related to a shortage of priests in certain areas of the world, it might set a good precedent down the line. Because while it would be easy to think that celibacy is what's leading to these sex abuse scandals, that probably isn't the case, and more likely it's that the protected and child-adjacent job is specifically attracting pedophiles. But even still, celibacy can't possibly help the insularity that breeds these predators, especially since priests weren't even originally required to be celibate and only made the switch in the 12th century, and we've been talking about changing the rule for a while now, and I don't know, maybe priests shouldn't be celibate, but that's not what this video is about. We're talking about Cool Pope and all the progressive changes he's made in the church, boosting liberal ideas like maybe being nice to gay people and having women in power and being kind toward immigrants and perhaps listening to the majority of scientists when they say that the planet is in trouble. Super extremist stuff, you know? And so naturally, a lot of religious conservatives aren't too happy about that, including many higher ups in the church. And we might as well make some kind of graphic for this called Church Fight 2020. Oh heck. It's a full-blown church war up in here. In one corner, we got the cool pope. Mr. I pray there are no schisms, but don't give a single drop of f if there is. Putting on his deal with it shades and hoverboarding away with his big pope balls, knocking over mailboxes. In the other corner, Cardinal Raymond Burke, a man who has been described as the enemy of the pope, putting on his f the pope shades. Whatever those are. Dracula glasses, I guess. Now, Burke, aptly named after the worst character in the Alien franchise, is seen as a traditionalist and conservative within the church. What that means is that he not only believes that women should be nowhere near the priesthood, but that men have become marginalized by radical feminism of the 1960s. He's still mad about the 60s, and even blames the sex abuse scandals in the church on it, somehow. 
When Louise Lears, a nun that was extremely beloved in her community and helped create the Center for Survivors of Torture and War Trauma in St. Louis, attended the ordination of two women priests from the Roman Catholic Women Priests Movement, Burke f***ing kicked her out of the church for attending the ceremony, like some kind of Harry Potter villain. Back in the early 2000s, Burke publicly said he would refuse to give communion to any politician that was pro-choice. In 2014, he gave an interview where he said that families should absolutely exclude LGBT relatives from Christmas. You know, like, like how the Bible teaches that hate is good and we should push our family away and function off of disgust and spite and all of that. Naturally, he doesn't much like immigrants either, which is a, a biggie we'll get to. This guy is so f***ing archaic that he even thinks people who remarry are going to hell. That's what we're dealing with here. Dude's crustier than mummy jizz. Like, Cardinal Burke is such a piece of shit that not only was he pals with Steve Bannon, but then openly dumped him when Bannon implied that there was a gay culture within the church. Steve Bannon wasn't right-leaning enough for Burke. And so just a year into his popeness, cool pope, went and demoted Cardinal Burke, who believes he was ousted to, quote, weaken the church's teaching and practice. And Burke wasn't the only person snubbed by cool pope, who then boosted the careers of more pro-LGBTQ and pro-immigration church officials. And wouldn't you know it, a lot of those snubbed individuals were American and were very supportive of leaders that happened to be pretty fashy. Cardinal Burke, for example, became totes BFFs with former Italian Prime Minister and Nationalist Matteo Salvini, who did a whole lot of shitty things when it came to immigrants. Oh, and here's a big shocker. He's also a supporter of Donald Trump, because why not? Another supporter of Salvini and unsupporter of Cool Pope is Cardinal Gerhard Ludwig Müller who was fired back in 2017 after he criticized the Pope's firing of three priests from the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, the section of the church that presides over the sex abuse allegations, presumably because they were doing a bad job at that. But in fairness, keeping track of all the church's sex abuse allegations is a depressingly difficult job. Anywho, Muller who made his support of Salvini, a politician who invoked Mussolini on several occasions, extremely transparent when he just flat out said, and it's a quote, there are countries that want to de-Christianize Italy and Europe, while Salvini has gone back to the patron saints of the European Union, to its Christian roots. So in other words, folks like Cardinal Burke and Mueller are attracted to Trump and Salvini because they believe their anti-immigration stance will preserve their Christian and, you know, white nations. Wonderful. This is despite the fact that neither Salvini nor Trump are particularly religious, and in fact seem to have a hilariously thin grasp on the teachings of the Bible and fail whenever they attempt to pander to people of faith. Do we have an amazing clip? Okay. You mentioned the Bible. You've been talking about how it's your favorite book, and you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal, so I don't want to get into there's verses. No, there's I don't no want to get into it. There's no, no I, verse I, that means I a lot to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Mm. There it is. At this point, you might have noticed exactly the kind of riff we're looking at here. On one side, we have people who have looked at the Bible and thought, well, Maybe we should follow the stuff about kindness and love and junk, as opposed to the thousands of years of human-constructed dogma within a clearly corrupted church. And on the other side, we have a bunch of old white guys in positions of power claiming to want to protect the institution itself. You know, the one that put them in power. And in order to do that, they've decided to support cartoonishly corrupt politicians that have spent a lifetime doing literally the opposite of what the Bible teaches. The level of denial it would take to ignore all the things we could list about Trump is so great that we don't even really have to list them, do we? Like, like do we? Of, of, this isn't new. It's not nearly the first time the religious far right has ignored all the religious shortcomings of a candidate in order to get what they want. They famously supported Ronald Reagan, a twice-married Hollywood elite who never went to church, over Jimmy Carter, a man who continues to teach Sunday school despite being... I'm pretty sure, dead. It's like, to get the things they want, the religious right sold their, um, 
their essence and allegiance to powerful figures representing the opposite of their religion to get something they wanted, which luckily totally isn't a thing there's a religious allegory for and therefore could be good or bad, right? This dynamic has always been around, but it tends to be really noticeable when someone like Trump shows up, like putting dye in a swimming pool to find a leak. Trump is so obviously corrupt that his support at least gives us a clear view of who the opportunists are. And we're not just seeing this ideological rift in the Vatican, but America too. Sometimes as a literal rift, such as the recent news that the United Methodist Church is planning to split in half over LGBTQ rights, one side performing gay marriage and the other side continuing to ban it. It's like A-B testing for faith as they learn which church attracts more people. And that's of course the cynical view, which is that the various churches facing a decline of followers are making the business decision to stay relevant with the times. On the other hand, Perhaps they just realize that they're in no position to talk down about sexuality ever since the word priest became synonymous with molestation. I don't know. Whatever the case, it's not bad, right? It's not, it's not bad for Christianity today to actually say, hey, maybe Trump isn't good, you think? And if you're religious and watching this and not sure what to do, maybe you could check in with your own church or place of worship and see where they stand on people like Trump and human rights and climate change. And maybe there's some way to judge the morality of what they say, like with a, like, uh, that, like with a book or something. And you can read that book and really do some soul searching and ask yourself what the purpose of a church should be and if your church is serving that purpose. And you know, if you're a religious person that doesn't go to church, that's cool. But maybe we should start supporting churches that are doing the right thing with these issues. Because here's the bummer. Despite all of the changes being made, the Vatican and Catholic Church aren't gaining influence. And instead, conservative evangelists are gaining sway not just in America, but other places in the world. And with them come support for Trump and other nationalists and anti-LGBTQ movements and all that terrible stuff. And here's the real bummer. The bummer bun of the butt sandwich and the secret point to this entire video. Heck, let's do a graphic card for it. The butt sandwich. The B sands is this. Everything I said about the Vatican and cool Pope being drowned out by the religious right while trying its best to become progressive, the reason why that's happening, why folks like you and me don't really care and why the left isn't suddenly backing the church is because when you dig into it, the Pope isn't actually progressive at all, nor are his efforts that great. Cool Pope isn't actually liberal or radical, he's centrist at best, he's still pro-life and anti-gay marriage, and when he talked about how violence against women was bad, he specifically used that to decry pornography and sexual liberation as well. He's not actually a cool Pope, and to most progressives or even centrists would come off as extremely conservative on many issues. The church didn't swing to the left, it's just becoming less far right. And the anger from conservatives and praise from progressives for that marginal change shows just how messed up we really are on what should actually be considered the center. Most likely thanks to, uh, uh, I don't know, like fascism or something maybe, I don't know. He isn't even doing nearly enough about the sex abuse stuff and has failed to condemn some of the accused. Those far right cardinals I talked about, like that Burke guy, well it's true, he demoted a lot of them. It's not like they aren't still hanging around in positions of power. So that's why they still aren't making waves. Because had they actually swung far left, that would be something of note. But in reality, they're just dangling closer to the center like all too familiar milk toast we've come to expect from democratic figureheads now. Joe, why are you here, Joe? What are you, why, why what are you doing? G so no, cool Pope, isn't nearly cool enough to make a difference. He's progressive enough to be pushed away by conservatives, but not progressive enough to influence or attract the left. And so ultimately, these things don't really matter that much and maybe didn't need a whole video about him. I'm sorry.
That isn't to say we shouldn't praise the church and maybe even keep pushing them to the actual center. And maybe one day we could even have a pope that actively fights back against fascist ideas and for LGBTQ rights and meaningfully combating climate change and therefore actually matters in the world. We should praise the marginal changes, not just in this religion, but any of them that takes steps towards accepting LGBTQ people and immigrants and speaks out about climate change because it's technically better than nothing. But when doing so, always remember that they are not necessarily on our side either. Much like when, in 2007's TMNT film, the turtles team up with the foot to fight the otherworldly monsters released by Max Winters in order to end his immortality. They still part ways, fully aware of the schism between them. Them being the church, and I guess, are we the, we're the, tur we're the turtles. We're the turtles. I haven't thought about the turtles in all of this. Someone's got to be the turtles. Maybe comparing the Catholic Church to Ninja Turtles isn't a good analogy. No, <laughs> that can't be it. That can't be it. No, you're right, Cody. You rude but cool news dude. Give me a break! That's from the Turtles, right? I don't know. Can we roll the credits? I've been done for so long. Heroes in a Half Shell, thanks for watching. Um, like and subscribe and leave a comment that's nice or mean, I don't care. And uh, check out our patreon.com slash some more news. And also we've got a podcast called Even More News and uh, additional Ninja Turtles reference. Cowabunga. Now Abunga, here's some news. All right. Um,